I'm Chris Shandek. Today on CY Interview, we welcome actress Sheila Omi. She is starring as one of the voices in Disney Pixar's Elemental. It's coming to theaters nationwide this weekend in the United States of America. Sheila, as always, thanks for joining us back on CY Interview today. How are you? I'm great, Chris. Thanks for having me. Hi, Rob. Oh, well, it's always nice to have you. And of course, joining us is CY Interview sponsor, <laughs> the founder of Epic Financial Strategies LLC, Mr. Rob Gill. Rob, how are you today? Hey, Chris, how are you? And Sheila, how are you? Happy, once again, thankful Thursday. Super excited to, when, when I saw I was interviewing or part of this interview, I was pumped up and I'll tell you why when, when I get to go. Yep. So just Sheila, just to begin, you know, Elemental's coming to theaters nationwide this weekend. Did you ever think you were going to be a Disney voice to begin? <laughs> Never in my life, never in my wildest dreams. It's just such an honor. I have and, to pinch um, myself constantly. Mm -hmm. So, you know, looking at that, I, I saw the movie, um, I saw the movie um, last week, and I just have to say, obviously, one of the great messages of the film is about how, you know, no matter we may have differences, we're more similar than we are different. Um, why don't you tell me about that and what you think the most important message from the film is that you took away while doing this project? Uh, well, you know, I'm an immigrant myself and this, uh, this cartoon, although it's really fun and funny, it does, uh, it does feature immigration because it was um, created by Peter Son, who um, is a child of immigrants himself, of Korean immigrants. And so this, uh, this um, movie was uh, lightly based on his experience, having immigrant parents and falling in love with a uh, beautiful American woman and all the comedy and uh, misunderstandings that, that happened. Um, and... Um, when I was watching the film, I felt like I was really resonating with Ember. Ember is the, um, the, the star of the film. She's this beautiful, fiery, um, hot-tempered, really funny uh, fire creature. And I play her mom. But watching it, I realized how much I resonate with... Um, because, yes, I'm an immigrant, but also my parents are immigrants. And... Um, there's something that happens for, uh, I mean, I can speak for myself, but also a lot of friends of mine and people that I know that are also children of immigrants. And there's a kind of a heaviness, and not to make this heavy, but it's it's a guilt and a um, a burden that falls on our shoulders because we are so aware of the sacrifices that our parents made for us to have a better life yeah that's one of the lessons in the film obviously you play the mother of the main character cinder lumen in the film um what do you like about her she's also kind of a a, a love matchmaker as well um what was this character like for you when you were reading the script before you did the voiceover i immediately uh found myself in her like this is the First time in my life I've played a part that is 1000% me, except that um, I speak Persian and I speak English. She speaks Fireish <laughs> and English. And uh, we had a brilliant linguist create the language of Fireish for the movie. And Isikashhus um, means I love you in Fireish. And this woman is so full of love and passion and love is her business. She's a matchmaker. So she's so um, um, moved by love that uh, she, she has this gift of being able to smell if two people are in love, they, 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 the, what their smoke gives off. She knows if they are in love and, and meant for each other. Mm -hmm. And I'm also a matchmaker. I'm a terrible matchmaker. And my friends hate me for it. And to this day, I have not had a good, um, you know, I I'm not good at it. C Cinder's very good at it. <laughs> and definitely. So I want to transition this over to Rob um, Sheila. He is a big fan of Tehran, just to let you know. Rob, go ahead. Oh. Sheila, um, first of all, it's, it's so nice to meet you. I'm just sitting here blown away watching um, your tonality, listening to your tonality, seeing how you, you, you talk through the movie itself. And Because uh, I like to study everything I can and just watching how you're presenting. It was amazing. And thank you. I want to go see the cartoon now, obviously. Well, the Pixar movie, <laughs> I did say, not the cartoon. Um, and I can't imagine 
how uh, that experience has been for you. Um, but I got to tell you, when I found out I was interviewing you today, I am a major fan of Tehran, the show Tehran. Oh, so and happy to hear it. Your role, I don't want to pivot off of um, you know Elemental, but your role there as um, you know the investigator's wife, right? Is is I forget his name. I, I do apologize. Faraz, Faraz Kamali. Thank you. Who's you know he goes through his his own you know the, the marriage you guys have and mm -hmm. the conflicts and the secrets and and everything in that in that. The way it's portrayed in that that show is amazing, and um, oh, I'm you. one of those guys that's going to watch all the episodes as I can over like a 10, 15 hour period. So I, I have oh. to like immerse myself in, and um, you know, season one into season two. I, is there a season three coming out? Is there? There is, and it's great. It's going to be great. I, I can't tell you dates. Unfortunately, yep. there's no dates yet. We we filmed it, and it's so good. Yeah, it's so good. I'm really excited for you. Yeah, uh, thank you. <laughs> I can't, can't wait to see it. And, and, and you know, my question is: in that in that show, does for you and your you know where you're from and um and how you were brought up and you were just speaking on immigration and and all the beautiful things that is tied to to the Pixar movie in that show, does that represent any part of you at all? Is that anything that you've that you really tied to and and how you were brought up or you know your life back through that time in history? Here's the thing, um, you know, the, the character Nahid that I play is yeah. Iranian. She's born in Iran and I'm Iranian American. I was born in Iran. That's it. We have no more similarities than that because, um, you know, she, she's married to uh, a man who works for the Iranian government. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm uh, as Sheila, I'm so proud of Iranian women because of the woman life freedom movement that they've spearheaded and that they're trying to make Iran a better world for minorities and people that are not um, of that specific uh, form of Islam that the government is. So we're very, very different. Um, yeah. And, and working with the cast, is, is there members that you really enjoyed working with? Oh, my God. I am so crazy about the cast yeah. and the crew um, and the filmmakers. They're a really special, special group of people. And we laugh a lot, yeah. a lot. We have a lot of fun. And everything's on location. Is it on location over in in, in Tehran? Is that where everything is? No, we could, no. I I could not go to Tehran uh, safely, mm -hmm. um, and you know because we I, I um, my family and I we um, just happened to be in the U.S. when the revolution happened, and and my dad was um, uh, he was a philanthropist and he was a businessman, but years before he was the colonel of the Shah's army and he was on um, this new government's uh, execution list. So. We can't go back, unfortunately. And I love Iran so much. It's such a beautiful country. And um, and I'm not alone. There are millions of um, Iranians that can't go back to their mm. homeland. And how old were you when you came over to the United States? I was 10. Okay. Was that a tough trip? Do you remember the first 10 years oh, being over? Yeah. What was mm -hmm. that like? Um, it was the worst time of my life. Mm. It was, you know, for, for myself, for my um, parents, because uh, once the new government took over, then they started executing, I think there's 150,000 people that is written, but it's closer to 300,000 people that they tortured and executed. And we're just so grateful that my dad wasn't there. Yeah. We're and very grateful to be alive. So when you come over, you come to the United States and 10 years old, and I'm sure that transition 10 to 14 may have been its own challenge. How did you become mm -hmm. an actress? How did you, what was the path that led you to where so you are today? I went, uh, I went to Van Nuys High School. Mm. Um, and it's funny, we, uh, we had a house in Studio City that my sister at the time, and this is 1976, uh, that she had bought in Studio City, and it's a beautiful house. But my mom was so depressed, obviously, and I think she was also at that time going through menopause and and the just the crumbling of her nation. And every day we'd get horrible news about someone else, of our dear friends who had died. And um, so she kept moving us back and forth between Studio City and Van Nuys. So I never had a chance to, you know, and in, in those years of life, it's so important to... 
yeah. kind of be, a, you know, have some kind of routine, which I, I didn't. But when I went to Van Nuys High School for the first time ever, I stayed in one school. So 15, 16, 17, 18. Got it. And when I was 15, there were these incredible 18 year olds and they were doing plays and musicals. And I was just stunned and amazed. And I thought, this is what I want to do. So I started being a um, prop mistress and worked my way into being a stage manager and then started doing plays. And by when I was 18, I played Elizabeth Proctor in The Crucible. And um, wow. Yeah. Wow. And, and it's, it's interesting because I, I, I thoroughly immerse myself in peak performance mindset coaching. I believe mm -hmm. in neuro-linguistic um, you know, brain processing and, and a lot of stuff that came from, at least from my perspective, out west. I'm, I'm on the East Coast here in New Jersey. Mm -hmm. How were you able to overcome those early years? Do you, did you visualize this where you are today at some point in those younger days and how were you able to emotionally handle some of those? Oh, my. I, I have the most amazing story for you about visualization. If we have time. Do we have time? I have time, so, Chris. We do. So I'm, we I'm still got like about old. seven minutes. Great. Okay. okay. I'm 15 years old. And um, there was this guy at Van Nuys High School named Bill Wesley, who was not only amazing on stage, but he was also the captain of the football team. And he was the boyfriend of the most beautiful woman I'd ever seen. <laughs> and her, uh, she, she is Ashley Lawrence, and she's, she's an actress today. But when I would watch the two of them on stage, I was just so mesmerized. And one day in my 15-year-old, totally innocent, stupid uh, daydreaming, I daydreamed that if Bill Wesley <laughs> would ever uh, get on his knees and kiss my hand in front of the whole school, that people will know that I'm something special. Mm. I swear on my life, it wasn't two weeks, maybe three weeks, that I got a part in, um, so a friend of mine who was 18 and I'm 15 uh, was taking a directing class. So he hired me, he cast me to be the flower girl in this play called Pushcart Peddlers. It was a, I think it was a one act play. And Bill Wesley played the part of the man who gets on his knees and he kisses my hand <laughs> in front of the whole school because all the English classes had to see this play. So, yes, visualization happens. And thanks for reminding me, Bob, I should visualize more. Yeah, yeah. I, I forget sometimes, <laughs> too. <laughs> um, but listen, I, I, you know, I believe proximity is power. Um, yeah. I believe talent pool is important. And if you're around people that have the same desire that you have, and it sounds like that high school was a, a hotbed talent of actors and actresses. That's what I'm feeling mm -hmm. right now. Mm -hmm. I know Van Nuys has you know, had some people come through there that are, famous besides you do Thank these you. folks do these folks uh reach back out to you now or do you your, your people from the early years from age 10 to 17 10 to 18 um is there a lot of no i wish i think about them a lot and we uh we're connected on facebook uh you know and and i see their lives and i see their children and i i just get such joy out of it but no but we should i i really like to i'm planning on hopefully this year. Well, Chris, I just want to say one last thing. Yeah. Turn it back over yeah. to you. Sheila, I'm a major fan. Yeah. I love your show. I can't go. I can't wait to go watch the movie, uh, Pixar now elementals and, um, had no, when I, when, when Chris sent me the information on you and, and, and I saw who it was, I was, and this is my fifth interview, all great interviews would see where I interview, but this is my mm -hmm. favorite right now, right oh, here. Thank just so you clear. so much. Rob, it means so much to Big me. Big fan of Toronto. Much. Big fan. Thank she, you. Thank you. Sheila, focusing on Elemental um, before mm -hmm. we before we leave you here, I think people want to know for the voiceover process, do you ever do dialogue with other voiceover actors or do you guys all record separately? So here's the thing. Uh, up to uh, last night when I saw a little something on Instagram, I thought we all recorded separately. But I think for the most part, maybe the two main characters, the uh, water character, um, Wade, and the fire character, my daughter, uh, played by Leah Lewis and Mamadou Ate, I saw that they were in the booth together. But the rest of us, um, we all record separately. So it looks like we're speaking to each other. And that uh, really speaks to the brilliance of Peter Son, the director, who is able to just orchestrate it so incredibly that it really looks like everyone's talking to each other. What do you want people to take away from Cinder Loom and your character in general in closing? Mm, that love is so important. Mm. 
and that um, that it's our differences that when you accept people that are different than you mm. and think differently, maybe they worship differently or don't worship at all, um, that it makes both parties better and more sophisticated. And it's like a, it's a very special alchemy that happens. Mm. That every, that every, that this world is supposed to be made of all kinds of human beings and um, you're very special, but, but you're not that special. <laughs> you know. Well anyway. said. Well, well, I'm just going to say congratulations, obviously, being a Disney voice and being archived in Disney history mm. with Elemental is obviously a big thing for any actor or actress. So congratulations to you on that front. I'm really happy for you. Hope you enjoy the entire Disney experience. I know it's a whirl and thing sometimes. So for actress Sheila Omi, Elemental comes to theaters nationwide in the United States this America this weekend. Disney Pixar and for C Wine Review sponsor, the founder of Epic Financial Strategies, LLC, Rob Gill. I'm Chris Yannick for Sea Wine. We thank you both for being here today. Thank you, Chris. Thank you so much, Chris. Bye, Rob. Thank you for watching today's Sea Wine Review segment from Las Vegas. Please hit the like button and please hit the subscribe button to be updated on all future Sea Wine Review content from Las Vegas and beyond.